Welcome to Cigar City Radio, episode number, oh, episode number 69. Oh, Randy. I'm your host, Randy Ojeda, and making the magic happen, Mr. Jason Solanas. Have you ever worn one of those hats that makes your forehead into a so when you're you can while you're every Wow. Wow, Jason. Cigar City Radio is back after a few weeks of mostly music. Yeah. Mostly music. We uh, had Gasparilla Music Festival, which is the episode you're about to listen to, and then flew to Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, um, which the Cigar City Management family had, I think it was 51 or 52 sets at South by Southwest. Can I get a goddamn? Yeah. So it was a busy week with uh, all of our bands that were there, Fruit and Flowers and Ex-Girlfriends, The Fantastic Plastics, Send Medicine, Parrot Dream, Death Hags, Kino Camino. I mean, just so many awesome bands all in one place uh, just doing the South by thing, man. It was was a, a whole lot of fun. But we are back And we're bringing you our coverage of Gasparilla Music Festival. This is part one because we had had just so much coverage that we had to split it into two pieces. Unless you wanted to listen to two hours, two hours and 15 minutes straight. Yeah, so we'll give you a little break between part one and part two. But this was a lot of fun because we actually got to set up right next to the replay guitar exchange or right in the replay guitar oh, we were exchange. Up in it. Yeah, we were up, up in the tent. So big shout out to Replay Guitar Exchange for letting us hang out in their tent. Big thanks to Michelle from Gasparilla Music Festival and everybody from Gasparilla Music Festival for just putting on an amazing weekend. It was a lot of fun to be there. We were really happy to be a part of it and so excited already for next year. So coming at you with part one, we've got Ella Jet and Future Soul, the Little Kintner Boys. The Reese Brothers, who you might remember from episode 68, Friedback, who was on episode 67 and episode 4, and our new friends King Complex, closing this thing out for part 1. We'll have part 2 coming at you in a couple of days, and it'll be glorious. So here it is, episode 69. Jet and the future soul. Hi, Hi. how's it going? How's it going for you? You just got off stage. Good. I was really nervous, but it went well. <laughs> it went really well. Uh, the the show was incredible. The songs are great. Like the just the blues sound that you guys have. The guitar playing. Shout out to your guitar player over here. Is yeah, very cool solos. Harmonies on point. It was really nice. So. Um, you know, what What was it like to get the call that you're doing uh, Gasparilla Music Festival oh, this year? Oh, man. I was so excited. I started bouncing up and down. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a cool, it's a such a great festival and such a great time like here in Tampa. Did you come last year or any of the yeah. years before? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I came last year and then I actually played two years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, it was uh, me and a cello player, uh, Brett Bocott. Um, we did like a folk set in the, I think it's the amphitheater. Yeah. 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 So th- yeah. this is a totally different thing, though. Ella yeah. Jett and the Future Soul. Totally different. <laughs> yeah. So what is what is the Future Soul? Um, it's what kind is of... Future Soul? <laughs> um, it's just a like a collective project where just um, I don't know, just creating, really, just experimenting with new sounds. It's really fun. Every time we write a song, the sound kind of changes yeah. and morphs a little bit into something new. And I really like the direction that everything is going. Yeah. Where, where's, where do you think it's heading? Where's the direction? Um, well, right now we're just focusing on getting out this album that we're recording so we can get our original music out there. What's the, what's the name of the album? It's called Love Sound. Love Sound. Cool. That's right on. And I heard some of the new, newer songs like Fibonacci sequence. Is that going to yeah. be on there? Yep. Yeah. So, everything we played today. Cool. So I see it like 
with songs like Fibonacci sequence, are you guys trying to go a little bit more into like the, uh, you know, the spacey like yeah. realm or? Well, Fibonacci sequence is interesting. It's, it's like a three part song. Uh huh. Um, the third part hasn't been finished yet. Um, but it's supposed to be a, a talking about like the afterlife. Yeah. Um, and how like that realm is much realer than the one that we're in now and kind of like delves into that. And then at the end of the song, it's like actually going into that like plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then the next half of the song will be like when you're actually there, but we're still working on that half. <laughs> so you say we, are you the, the main songwriter or does everybody in the band contribute to songwriting? Um, Sarah and I write a lot of the lyrics together. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like the instrumentation and chord progressions, it's kind of like group effort. Um, Zach, our key player, writes a lot of the progressions and um, sometimes I'll come to the group with a progression and an idea and then it kind of just builds from there and takes on a life of its own really. So you, so you guys kind of jam on it and yeah. figure out where it goes from there. Yeah. That's totally cool. That's totally cool. So how long have you been playing together with this with this group, with this incarnation of the group? Almost like a year maybe. Wow. Yeah. That's, for, that's not very long to, <laughs> to already be up here rocking at Gasparilla Music Festival. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's so, been fun. It's been really fun. I know that um, you have a big show coming up in March, right? March 24th, the uh, Jazz and Blues Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, um, who's playing on that? Betty Fox Band is playing. Yeah. John Butler is on there. Yeah. John Butler. That's going to be really cool. Yeah, we're really excited. <laughs> um, and, you know, any other shows coming on, coming up in the, the near future? Oh. Um, or what are you really excited about right now? Um... Definitely the Jazz and Blues Festival is what we've been like working on a set for, um, but uh, I'm pretty out of the loop. <laughs> you just things. let Robert deal with that? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Like, I focus on the music a lot and then I'm like, oh shit, we're playing blah 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 this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Should probably think about that. <laughs> so so I, I'm curious because Robert's the person that initially uh, reached out to me about the group like you know way back when you guys first started I guess yeah. a year ago you know um, and so he's like he's like your the band manager but he's also your uncle yeah yeah so what, what was that like was it just you know he saw you playing and was just like hey I'm gonna I'm gonna take you under my wing you know? yeah I, I ever since I was a uh, little um, I started playing when I was around like nine ten years old and uh, he was very encouraging and so was the rest of my family um, but eventually it was kind of just like, do you want to play gigs? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, I would play a lot during, like my my dad and my uncle were in a band called Experimental Pilot. Cool. Um, so I would like play during their breaks a lot and like that's kind of how it started. And then I started playing little festivals and yeah. And how old were you when this started? Like when you I started? was like 10. 10? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the time to start, right? Start start young, start early. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's really cool. I uh, was inspired by uh, girls my age doing it on YouTube, like covering Taylor Swift songs and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. It's like, I want to do that. And then I picked it up and like two weeks later I was singing and playing. Yeah, I mean, you can't knock Taylor Swift, right? Because like a lot of young people grew up like listening to her music and learning yeah. about, like, hey, I can pick up a guitar and I can yeah. play songs too. Course. I love Taylor Swift, so yeah. I, can't, yeah, I can't sing. Anything. She's a great songwriter. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't listen anymore, but I still appreciate, I still appreciate her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she was in many ways a pioneer, I guess. Yeah, you for know? sure. She inspired me to play music. Really, like yeah. that's kind of where it started. Yeah. So that's cool. Thank well, you. You know, <laughs> right, right before you guys, we had kind of, you know, at Gasparilla, there was kind of the children's part of the. Uh, the festival so there's still a lot of kids that saw your set you know so maybe they'll you maybe you'll have inspired another generation of songwriters yeah you know, that'd be seeing, awesome seeing you out there <laughs> so all right so the new album is love sound right but there's an ep that you're working on too right or did um, that already come out yeah i'm i i'm working on putting out it's a solo album mm -hmm. it's called black wave diary yeah that's, um, that sounds really good I started recording it like two or three years ago. It's just taken a really long time to get everything together, get it mixed and mastered and put out just financial issues. But that will be coming out. And then right after that, Love Sound will be coming out. Oh, right on. So, so. you kind of see like what I do on my own. And then with the full group, kind of how the sound has evolved. 
So you get to see kind of both sides. Two of, totally different albums. That's really cool. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait for that. And uh, where, where, do, where do you record? Because you're from the area, right? You're from Tampa. Yeah. Um, do you uh, Black Wave Diary, I recorded with Justin Beckler. Yeah. He's an amazing producer. Um, and then uh, the album that we're recording right now, Love Sound, I've been recording at Zen Recording with uh, Steve Conley. Nice. I love working with him. Steve Conley's He's a legend. Awesome. Man. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Nothing but good things to say. Yeah, it's been really awesome. So, uh, so now that you're starting to take over the Tampa Bay area, what's what's next? Are you going to start take over the rest of Florida and the rest of the region? Yeah, I, th I think we're going to try and do a Florida tour sometime soon here. You can talk to him right here, you know. Yeah. So. All right, so we are hanging out with the Little Kintner boys who just rocked the Replay Guitar Exchange stage right here at Tibbetts Corner at Gasparilla Music Fest. So first off, what, what, where does the name come from, Little Kintner boys? Well, I just want to compliment you, Randy, on your pronunciation of Kintner because it is Kintner. It's not Kintner, it's Kintner, and you did a very nice job on thank that. Thank you, thank you. I practiced it. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I like someone who prepares. You've really prepared. The, the little Kittner boy, if you remember the movie Jaws, are you old enough to remember the movie Jaws? I am old enough to be terrified of the movie Jaws, yes. Do you remember that little boy who was on the raft and he was got, swallowed whole? Yeah. He was chewed up, the blood spurted everywhere uh -huh. on the raft. That's Alex Kittner. Okay, and so there's a line in the movie when the mayor says to Chief Brody and, yeah. and Hooper, I'm not going to stand around here while you cut open this shark and watch the little Kittner boy spill out all over the dock. That's what it's from. That is an incredible reference. Yes, thank About you. one out of 200 of our fans knows it, <laughs> and that one person loves it. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> it's incredibly stupid, but we love it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the band. How did you guys get, get together, and how did everything form? <laughs> KT? <laughs> well, we've known each other forever, since probably grade school. That's right. And they were playing in this band around 09, I think. That's right, 2009. And called me to be the drummer, but at the time, I think it was more of a, like, put the band together kind of thing, garage jamming, and I was gigging with another band, so they got together and then started yeah. getting some traction in the market. Yeah. Well, it was, and, pretty, it was a pretty organic thing, though. I mean, we, we really, it was a bunch of guys getting together playing rock and roll, just hanging out and having a good time. And then before we knew it, we were being asked to play at parties and different venues around South Tampa and uh, just got a lot of traction. And next thing you know, we're, we're playing the GMF. Yeah. It's awesome. How did that happen? I don't know. I mean, you know, um, we uh, we released a record called um, "We're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat" again. Again, the, a the Jaws, Jaws reference, reference. exactly. Yeah. So it's a Jaws themed band, is what I'm finding out. Well, so far it is. <laughs> <laughs> so far, but I don't know that we name the next record. I, I, I think we're we I think there. we're out of Jaws references. <laughs> I think. A, yeah, uh, that's it. We're waiting for Spielberg's people to. Uh, to <laughs> we're waiting for to the copyright suit yeah. from Sony, but that's exactly. uh, yeah. that. You know, I feel like they'd be cool with it. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, man. If anybody gets it, it's cool. It's yeah, cool. I know. So uh, anyway, we released a record of all original material, and uh, and um, you know we uh, made it made it aware to the um, to the GMF people, and they wanted us out here. That's awesome. And I mean, I'm, I could see why because the crowd was intense for you guys. Like one of the one of the rowdier crowds that I've seen today at GMF was for the Little Kintner boys. So how did, how does that make you feel? You know what's what's good about it. I think for us is you know we play a lot of different types of gigs. Mm -hmm. um, we played with Smash Mouth last week. Uh, we play bar gigs where we'll play a lot of cover tunes. Yeah. And the fact that the people that follow the band and have been following us for years find a way to come out, want to hear our original stuff, and they get into our original stuff the way they would get into, like, cover tunes they all grew up with, too. Yeah, no, people were singing along to all the words. and Right. Yeah. And they, they could, we released, when we released the, the CD, I, I don't even know what to say these days, the download, the yeah, CD. Yeah, the album, you know. You know, I was telling somebody when we put it on wax, and I'm like, you don't put shit on, ooh, I can't say that. No, no, you're right, cool, go. you can curse. <laughs> fuck, fuck me, fuck, fuck. That's a good, that's a bad thing for me to know, actually. <laughs> There's always a governor they put on me before a gig because we played a fundraiser at a school once and I f bomb 
my way through it, and the principal did not like it at yeah, all. You can't do that at the school. No, man. it's a bad idea, yeah. man. But it's authentic, right? Yeah, but, it's you. but um, I think for us, you know, like when we play, a, you know, a bar gig or something, when we're playing some covers with our originals, people really go crazy because we're like high energy. What you saw is what you get. Like we're pedal to the metal. We started 70 miles an hour. We ended 120. And yeah. there's no let up in our set. But when they embrace your original music in a festival setting, it's cool. You know, it's cool to look out there and see them. They know the material. It's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's really cool to see you guys, too, because like you said, you do put out that energy on stage. And, you know, people people kind of say that rock and roll is a, can be a young man's game, you know. There's a lot of like. Did the, he the just? Kid. Did he old shame us? No, Ra- I'm not Randy, old shaming. Randy, what is that? I'm not. Old, that? I'm not old shaming. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it as a bad thing at all. I think it's amazing that you can put out that energy and not be 19 year old kids. You know. Man. Well, well I, I would tell you that Dave probably agree, and I know Chaz, who's sitting there with Adam Mike, would agree that the way we're structured, the way we communicate with an audience, is to let them know that for whatever the set length is, 30 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, whatever, we want them to let go for a little bit and just kind of jump into it with us and take that ride with us, you know? Yeah. So energy and rock and roll does that. You know, you start playing stuff and you're a little too chill on it, doesn't do it. Yeah. You know? No, like the music kicks ass. Like it's not, you know, you're not pussyfooting around here, yeah. you know? No? Yeah. One of the classic little Kittner boy uh, uh, things about a show is we will get at the last last song of the night we'll bring everybody up on stage hand out tambourines and maracas and just rock it out with everyone jumping down up and down all, all, all over the stage i don't think it would have gone over too well over here at uh, gmf but <laughs> yeah. uh but that's kind of what we do and we just involve everybody and just leave it leave it all out there on the floor yeah I can I can see that. Like we were 19 years old. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you're making the 19 year olds look bad, you right? Because it's like, man, right? They're sitting down up front, like our 40 year old fans are jumping around like crazy up yeah. front, right? Because we had some of the young ones up there. I was looking over there, and they're like, "What do we do? We don't know what to do. If we start going crazy for these like old dudes, what's gonna happen?" Yeah, yeah, right. Well, how how do you juggle like you know the rest of your lives with being in this band and doing what you do? <laughs> That's tough, man. <laughs> it's a loaded question. That's tough. Um, well, I'm a surgeon, and I spend a lot of time in the operating room, and and as and while I'm in there, I play a lot of little Kidner Boy music to get me through and <laughs> okay. uh, and try to make it work. Yeah. I would, n- would not have guessed that you were a surgeon. Yeah. I well, mean, I don't know what I would have guessed you, that you, you would have were. You did not pay enough attention to me playing the guitar up there, man. I, you should have known. <laughs> you should have known. That's true. You were playing with the the, the specificity of the right? surgeon. Yeah. The very soft. <laughs> very hands, precise. Right? Yes. <laughs> very intricate movements. You know, there's a there's a band over in uh, St. Pete called the Hip Abduction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very right. hip to the Hip Abduction. Right. So, you know, I know their drummer and... You know, they were sort of the same thing, right? I mean, hip abduction came from like a surgical procedure. Yeah. He's an orthopedist, the guy that started that band. And, you know, they started getting traction and you know what they're doing now, right? Yeah. So, I mean, in rock and roll years, if you want to use rock and roll relativity, the Stones are in the mid 70s, bro. We're babies, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's right? true. Well, not only that, but I, well, I think you have an idea for a side project here. You know, if you just find all the other surgeons in town, that are also amazing musicians and right. just get them all together and you have a surgeon band. Like, yeah, I'm a lawyer, bro. But yeah. Chaz is the doctor. He's sitting over yeah. there lead guitars. Um, we're all, we all got jobs, man. It started yeah. out just to find a way to channel, you know, that energy that builds up. And, you know, for us, you know, you ask, how do you juggle it? I don't look at it as juggling it. You know, it's you kind of compartmentalize your life a little bit, right? Yeah. We've got this thing, and, and this is important to us, so we work hard at it. And we've been lucky. We played with Smash Mouth last week. We're playing with the Gin Blossoms in a few weeks. Yeah, you know, we get it. We get to do this, man. It's just fun. Like rock and roll is a dream, man. This is a dream come true, man. I, if you asked me ten years ago when we started playing together, would I play with Cracker? Man, they came up on stage and we played with Cracker, man. It was like one of the bands that I loved back in the '90s. You yeah, know? yeah, and. And to get on stage with them and jam out one of their songs, it's freaking awesome, you know. And uh, 
uh, the Bodines, Cracker, B 52s. I mean, you know, all these people we shared yeah. stages with. Driving yeah. and crying, and, uh, and Blues Traveler. Yeah. It's, you know, it's Smash a lot Mouth of fun. last week. And what's cool for us, like, we've been at gigs with some of those bands where their sets were wrapping up and people were blowing out of their sets because they wanted us to start our set early, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it could be just that, you know, it, for us, we don't ever take it for granted, right? Yeah. Maybe because we started doing it later at this level in life, you know, but it's been a decade. And, you know, it's not a new thing now. It's like, yeah. you know, we're there, so. So if, if that if that golden goose came, you know, would you would you drop your day jobs? Would you stop being a surgeon, stop being a doctor, lawyer, or whatever, and, and just do this full time? We, we've had that talk recently. I've had, I've had it with Chaz. Yeah. I probably mentioned it all. I said, there's very few things I would do for twice the money you make doing what I do. Yeah. But I would do this for a fraction of the money I make as a profession. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's tough, though. That's a tough question. Yeah. Golden Goose comes by. If the Golden I'm Goose taking, truly gets... I'm, I'm taking the Golden Goose. What is our goose. saying? <laughs> I'm taking our the Golden Goose. Our saying yeah. is a bad night playing rock and roll is a be better than a good night doing anything else. Yeah, yeah. that's that's you know. true. Truer words have never yeah. been spoken. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you have coming up? What's what's up on the horizon for, for the Kinder Boys? Uh, we got a couple gigs coming up. We're playing at Skipper's Smokehouse on April the 7th. One of my favorite venues. Uh, great place. Great place. Great support of live... Uh, uh, local music in the Tampa area. Yeah. And um, April 13th, we've got a gig, which is a private party gig with uh, at, uh, called Palma Palooza, four bands. Uh, they have it every year. It's like the eighth, seventh, or eighth anniversary of it. And Gin Blossoms, playing with Gin Blossoms at that, at that gig. The That's really cool. oh, yeah. Is that other band playing? The Apple Something Express? Uh, Have Gun Will Travel has played uh, Have Gun Will Travel a couple yeah, times. They're a great, great local uh, yeah. area band. Um, uh, I'm surprised they're not here this year. They played GMF last year, yeah. so I think uh, they wanted to, you know, rotate the lineup a little bit, get some new, yeah, you know, um, new blood in there. And yeah, uh, so. and Boneyard. And Boneyard, right? Then we we tend to play a standing club gig over at Belmar Tavern. On, oh, uh, right on South Tampa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that where you all live in the South Tampa area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I think pretty much everybody, right? Yep. Yep. That's cool. Cool. Yeah, so, so that, that's uh, like our home base. Yeah, know. right on. Um, anything that you're looking forward to at Gasparilla Music Festival this weekend? Huh. I mean, besides besides the Cigar City Brewing. <laughs> right now. Right now. Right. Delicious. Man, I had a grouper sandwich. It was awesome. Also yeah. also <laughs> top notch. Yeah. The uh, food here is great. The beers yeah. are great. Yeah. Like, we're gratuitously plugging right now. Yeah. Where'd you get that grouper sandwich from, Dave? <laughs> yeah, well, this, this is Dave Hope. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Next thing you know, we'll have little kid Look. boy shirts with the shark and big rays yeah. on the back. Yeah. 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 I had a delicious yeah. piece of pizza from Sexton's yeah. Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Cut the check, Look, man. Right? Cut the check, Sexton. Well, yeah. Big Ray's Fish Camp was really good for that grouper sandwich, but I will give a gratuitous plug for the little Kittner boys. And we got Facebook page, we got we got um, a website, kittnerboys.com. We put Come our on music on the line. On the line. I think it's on the line. Yeah, yeah, that's how the on, kids say it. That's on how you line. kids say it, right? On yeah, the line. Yeah, yeah. On the yeah. iTunes. Definitely. And the Spotify. Yeah. The Spotify. The and I Spotify. think on the MySpace, does that happen? I don't know. No, no MySpace. I don't even know. Don't even know. That's um, dead. MySpace we, is we dead. We got a lot of ties to New Orleans. Uh, we went to college there. We go back there. I was there 10 times last year. We're tight and friends with a lot of local bands there. So I'm excited to see Naughty Professor tonight. Yeah, They're man, playing with man. a rapper who I don't know that well, but I know Naughty Professor well. I've seen yeah. them for, since they started, man. And their horn section, man, those guys are just okay. they're intense, man. I love yeah. watching them play. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Father John Misty, who I've never Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. He's closing uh, out the whole festival this weekend yeah. tomorrow night. So. Spoon, that's a, Spoon's that's, coming up pretty soon. I'm, I dig that. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I was like, am I going to miss Spoon? I don't think so. So uh, it was luckily. Yeah. Right. I think Naughty Professor goes on soon, like 545. So yeah, he, yeah. Actually, that might be them behind us. Oh, so. that? You got to look for the horns, bro. That, that, yeah, you got to find the horns. But yeah, exactly. um, All right, cool. Well, yeah. uh, any final thoughts for the Cigar City Radio listeners? For Gasparilla? Man, thanks for having us, Randy. Yeah, it's awesome. Hey, thanks for being here. So I'm sitting here with Brianna from Glove. How's it going? Pretty good. Excited to be here. What's the most exciting thing here for you? Oh, looking forward to Warpaint and Spoon for sure. 
Also, uh, friends and Johnny Mile, performing yeah. leader. Hell yeah, dude. Chris from Johnny Mile is one of the best guitarists. He is. Or best bass guitarists I've ever seen in He's my so life. He's so sick. I, I got to be in the house with him, and he just pulled out a bass guitar and started noodling. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't fucking believe I know. what was going so on. So talented. Yeah, incredible. I've never seen anything I like know. it in my life. So I have one question for you because our little underage, our under 21 intern, Chris Can over here, just attempted a wink at me. What's more awkward than someone turning their head and winking at the same time? Uh, God, I don't know. That's pretty awkward, though. I think that might be the height of awkward, just so you know, Chris, because you're, you know, yeah. <laughs> a, a budding young man. All right, well, we're here with uh, our new best friends, Yo. Kevin and Charlie Reese hey, from the Reese up? Brothers who you might remember from uh, a few weeks ago on the podcast. And uh, they just rocked the the main stage, the frontier stage here at Gasparilla Music Festival. So how was that? Oh, it was incredible. Amazing, yeah. yeah, it's a huge upgrade for us. Uh, we were on one of the small stages, actually this stage right here, um, two years ago. And then just to get to be on the main stage, uh, it really shows like the progress and everything we're doing is working, you know, to get yeah. to to, uh, yeah, I mean the energy there was awesome, and like it was cool to hear. It was cool to see you guys on such a big stage, and yeah, like with, yeah. with sound that was fantastic. Oh and, yeah, credit you know. to the sound people. That was incredible sound. It was awesome, um, and I'm very happy with the turnout. It was early, you know, our set was pretty early in the afternoon, but we had a good crowd, so felt good about it. Yeah, yeah. No, people were rocking out, and it's cool to see. Like, it's cool to look out in the audience and see people like singing along to the words, yes, and like definitely. people yeah. knew the song, so. That's really cool. Yes, absolutely. Um, you brought out Ted from Pacifier yes. too, right? So did he? Did you ask him to, to join you guys tonight? So yeah, we've um, every time he's in town when he's not touring and, and we're playing uh, in the same place, he just usually comes up and does the song now because we collaborated on that song and that was on the record that we put out. Um, and yeah, so it's just uh, we love you know getting to jam that song with him anytime we have the chance. So yeah, I, yeah. I told him about the festival. I'm like, hey, you want to come out? And he's like, hell yeah. So yeah, he's a big Roots fan, Spoon fan. So he's gonna have a good so time. He's gonna tonight. hang out and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. did you guys meet Roots or, the, or Spoon? Yet? I don't, I don't, I don't think know if the Roots here are here yet, yet but yeah. I know Spoon is here. Really? Spoon is here. So oh, hang out, just we'll hang out to, backstage, and you'll find yeah, we'll have to find them at that. some point. Cool. Absolutely. But that's that's really cool, man. It's uh, so. What do you think of the festival so far? What do you oh, think of the, it's, uh, the energy and the vibe here? It's such a cool festival, and we and we've we've been coming a few years now, and we've definitely seen it grow and and. Um, I read the article recently, I think, uh, in Tempe Times about how, you know, the festival landscape's kind of like crazy, like, yeah. the same bands are playing, you know, the, the different festivals and lineups are not, you know, what they used to be. And then, like, Gasparilla comes along and they've really, like, made its mark. Yeah. It's such an eclectic lineup and... Uh, yeah, they really turned this into a, yeah. a thing, man. Not genre-specific, you know? I like that, and just, like, because we rocked out and then the Bluegrass Band was after us, and then, like, this, yeah. you know, it's just... Yeah, like, there's a silent disco later on yeah, tonight, yeah, so that would be cool. There's really nothing like this in the country right now, so it's yeah. really, really cool. So. Um, what are you most looking forward to checking out this weekend at Gasparilla? Um, I like the... Uh, the record company a lot. They're coming up pretty soon. I want to see War Paint. There's a lot of buzz about them right now. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to War Paint, man. Yeah. Like they are, they're one of my favorite bands. Nice. So really looking forward to that. And obviously so. the Roots and Spoon and uh, Charlie Tuna yeah. and all your professor. Yeah. So. so I loved uh, today when uh, Kevin, when you introduced, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you introduced yeah. Charlie three times. Yeah. And then, but you, you got to give yourself more credit, man. You're not yeah. just a guitar player. I play guitar and you, keyboard, but yeah, he does most of the stuff. <laughs> you're you're the heart you're the heart and soul man you're the heart yeah, and soul yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right on well you, you were telling us last time you were on the podcast that you were gonna about to announce uh, something really cool after Gasparilla right, can right, you yeah. announce that now well we have a really cool uh, show we're doing with the band Ripe they're an awesome funk band um, from Boston and we're playing with them at Orpheum and Ybor May, nice. May uh, March 30th so the end of this month March 30th at yeah. the Orpheum Orpheum's dude that's gonna be a hell of a show that's yeah. right right next door to where we usually do the show right, so right. I mean we'll uh, we'll definitely be out for that one awesome. Awesome. yeah that'll be fun that'll be awesome and then uh, yeah, I mean you know we've already caught up so it's like yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just excited to hear more more Reese Brothers and stuff, guys. But oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, you guys killed it on stage Thank today. You so much. It was incredible that. performance. Thank you very and, much. And, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing you guys more, Absolutely. more often. Yes. So, anything else you want to want to throw out here before? Um, I mean, thanks, guys, for having us. Guys, for the Music Festival. That was awesome. Uh, check us out if you haven't heard of us. Reese Brothers, R I E S. Uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Instagram. 
and check out our website reachbrothers.com for all our shows and everything in between yeah just thanks for listening and uh, thanks to the crowd today for rocking out with us and uh, Gasparilla, Gasparilla Music Fest we're you know really pumped to be here and we're excited for we're, we're really excited for this festival how it's grown and how it continues to grow so. alright so you might hear the uh, the rockabilly sounds of uh, Johnny Mile and the Kilometers in the background but right now we are hanging out with friend of the show Friedback. Hey yo, back again. How's it going, Can't guys? Get rid of you, man. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, of course. We, I mean, you're playing in, yeah. uh, in a few hours, right? I am. Yeah, pretty soon. Five forty-five. What time is it now? I got to start setting up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better get over that, man. But you're playing the Furman Amphitheater, which is uh, yeah. one of my favorite spots to see a show here. I haven't played there yet, and I've been here for so long, and I've passed that stage so many times because it's here, right? Like, yeah. even when the festival's gone, the stage exists. Sure. And I'm always thinking, God, it'd be so fun to play that because it's just, you can see great from any any angle, you know what I mean? So. And the sound is actually really yeah. nice in there. Like, the acoustics are... are exactly, cool. yeah. I'm, I'm really stoked. I, I'm, I'm stoked to see a performance like like yours there because yeah. I've only seen you know bands or like acoustic sure. stuff singer you know? songwriter stuff yeah, yeah. so to hear like Same. your electronic music would be really cool well, last time I was here I think it was last year Queen of X played that stage yeah yeah and I saw that performance and she literally killed that stage so like yeah I'm, I'm just going to try to live up to that if I can. That's going to be tough. <laughs> I'm going to try. Yeah, because last year, everybody told us, oh, yeah, Queen of yeah, X like, it rocked it. I was, I don't, I forgot. I had a conflict where we were talking with somebody else at the same time and I didn't get to catch Dude, her. It was great. Like she, she had a wireless microphone. So by the last track, she was just going through the entire, <laughs> she was on top of the all MVP. around and everyone was just so into it. It was great. That's really cool. Yeah, it was awesome. That's really cool. So uh, tell us a little bit. I mean, we're, we're obviously we're here to talk about Gasparilla Music festival but yeah. you just got back from okeechobee music i did you yeah four sets there yes how was that what was that experience it like? was so playing the okeechobee o- o- okeechobee uh music and arts fest was the craziest thing i've done yet in my career in terms of just being at a festival for four days camping all four days like really getting into a fest because normally i'll like fly in or drive into a festival be there for a day and then fly in or drive out that night so like i don't really think about like putting down roots yeah but this is the first time i've had to like set up a tent the first time i've like had to deal with that whole other lifestyle because i've never really even done a festival for my own just like go and camp it's just not really the world i live in typically because i'm such an indoor cat i want to be home i I feel you (laughs) so yeah having the opportunity to go and like just be a part of a festival it was great because I was with Culture House, who did all the art in the entire festival. And they had an artist camping spot where we had catering and showers. And everyone that worked at Culture House, they're from Oakland. Yeah. Everyone that worked there was just as professional as possible. And it was so much fun to be a part of that community. And yeah, it was insane. And the crowds were great. And I played every night. I played between 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. And I would sleep for like an hour and a half. And I'd just get up with the sun and just be like, all right, what's next? Yeah. Play another show every day someone would come up and be like yo you were that dude right <laughs> that ace of bass shit that's you and i was like yeah they're like dude that's so cool yeah so yeah it was great the ace of bass shit's awesome yeah i haven't heard that since you worked it into the set so yeah it's uh, that was the i mean i i like to close with it because it's just so much fun to, yeah. to end with um so that was kind of the a little bit of the talk of the town for me which is cool because yeah. that's the newest single i have on soundcloud so I'm like, yeah, I hope people listen to it. And right now it's the most plays I have on any song. So I think people like it. Yeah, I would say so. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, what? give us a little teaser. What, you know, what are we going to see tonight? Anything different? Anything? <sighs> you know, I it's it's funny because it, it's it, my set is like water. Like I'm going to quote Bruce Lee, right? Yeah. Uh, it fills whatever container it's given. Right. So like during Okeechobee Fest, I had three hour long sets and one two hour long set. Wow. So I was doing just anything. It was mayhem. On the two hour long set, I was doing like a stand up routine <laughs> and I was like replaying songs because people would just cycle in and I was just getting feedback from the crowd and just like using it as almost like a workshop to be like, this is what I'm doing here. Let me, let me bring you into my world for a moment. But this one, it's a 30 minute set, you know what I mean? And it's a festival. So I want to make sure I'm in and out as quick as possible. Yeah. Because being prompt at a festival is like the number one thing for me. Absolutely. So I didn't want to bring everything that I have at the studio. I wanted to just be as loose as I could and just set up, get it ready, jam. So I think it's just going to be, you know, another case of just feel the energy of the crowd, just work my way through it. It's 
uh, I was supposed to play a little bit later today, mm -hmm. but then there were some scheduling changes, so they bumped me a little bit earlier. So, you know, it's gonna. I think the sun is still gonna be relatively out at that yeah. point. So I mean, it'll it's be kind of gloomy. Yeah, today, right. But, you know. So it'll, it'll be perfect to see because I haven't played like a show when the sun has been relatively out in years, probably. Yeah. And the the bad news is half of my gear is kind of built for like someone's bedroom. So the LEDs aren't bright enough to really see in broad daylight. So yeah. I'm hoping I can even see what I'm performing with. Yeah, what you're doing. I'm not yeah. sure if I can, but I'll make it work. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to. Yeah, right? I will. You're going to have to yeah. figure it out. Oh, I'll, I'll you know, any, anything I press on that thing, which is kind of great for me, there's so much fail safe. If I press the wrong thing, it's never the wrong thing. I just press a new thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, so then yeah. it's like, here's a new ball, ball of wax I can unravel. And yeah, so... I'm excited to find out what happens. That's really cool. Yeah. Is there anything else going on this weekend at this festival that you're particularly excited about? You know, there's so many great acts at this festival. Like, um, I didn't know until today that um, Charlie Tuna from Jurassic 5 was going to be here. Yeah. And he he was one of those MCs that I remember listening to, you know, on tour back in like the early 2000s. Like, he had a, a, a collab with Oza Motley back in the day. Okay, yeah, yeah. And... I just, I love that guy's tone. I love his bars. So I'm really excited to see him play yeah. a little bit later today. Also, seeing The Roots will be great because I haven't actually gotten a chance to check their live set out. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Uh, King Complex is going to play a little bit later on on this stage right here. And if anyone hasn't seen them yet, they're just a marvel visually. So definitely worth checking them out. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow, uh, you know, my buddy Mark Etherington is going to be playing. Pogo is going to be playing. Father John Misty. So I'm just going to try to hang out and vibe with everybody. Yeah. It's such a, just a great mix of bands and, yeah. and styles this weekend. Like, it's about as broad as it could be in a really good way. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, because it's all cool stuff. Yeah. Know? And how are you guys doing? You, you liking this little spot? Is this... This is the cool kids corner, man. Yeah. We got we got Micro Groove is over here. Yeah. Replay Guitar Exchange and us. I mean, that's as Dude, cool this as it is, gets, this right? is VIP right here, man. Yeah, I love pretty it. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Thank, shout out to Michelle from Gasparilla Music for setting us up Hell yeah. right here in the Replay Guitar Exchange. Tank, for sure. You know, allowing us to meet and talk with bands. Yeah. So we've been just it's been fun it's great man that's awesome it's great to see you guys as always how's it yeah how's let's party doing? i don't know i'm sure you guys are working the rest of the night but i'll be around no we'll be around we're, we're trying to wrap it up a little early sure. today so cool. that we can you know i want to see the spoon and i want to yeah. see the roots and war pain totally and, totally you know, the main stage is so good and then all the other stages have great bands I that know. i want to see too so yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a night, man. You Do your check. best. Are we gonna see you in the silent disco later? You know, I haven't ever done a physical silent disco. I've seen it happen in venues, and I and I and I love it watching it because it, everyone's so into it. But if you don't have headphones on, you just can't physically get as into it. Yeah. So I've never had headphones for myself. So maybe if someone will give me some headphones, I'll, I'll try it out. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be part of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm I'm excited about it. All right. Well, hopefully <laughs> hopefully we'll we'll bump into you in the silent disco. So I have to say, uh, I've met you six or seven times, and beyond your personality, the most consistent thing about you has been your hair. <laughs> like, your hair is impeccable every single time I see you. Oh, that's great so to hear. <laughs> I have to give a shout out to you, your barber, and whatever hair product you're using, because yeah. it's fucking incredible. Dude, okay, so so if anyone's at the festival or, or comes down to downtown uh, downtown Tampa, there is a there's a barber here that I go to. He's 30 year veteran from Cuba, you know. He's he's great balding guy, completely bald actually. Uh, you know, handlebar mustache. His name is Frank. He works at a place called Artisan's Edge on Twigs. It's call only. The door is locked. Like you can't even see inside. Give him a call. He'll say, I got no openings. Just say, you know, feedback, Matt, he'll get you in. He's, he's the one. He's definitely the one. So yeah, if you need, if you need uh, some hair styles, definitely check out Frank at Artisan's Edge. And what do you put in your hair to make it stay so perfect? Uh, well, you got to come out of the shower and you got to blow dry it. If you don't blow dry it, you're fucking up. You got to, you got to part it the way you want to part it while it's wet. Get the blow dry out. Get like one of those, uh, it kind of looks like a regular brush that would be circular, like bristles on every side. Yeah, yeah. But just the just the smaller version of that, just bristles on one little edge. Kind of use that to like tweak the, the part a little bit to keep that stuff up. And then just hairspray to lock it in. 
It, you know, it's you need to do it every day too. You can't just like set this up and then hope it lasts for a week. Yeah. It will not last. Like I, I tried to bring this hair to Okeechobee Music Festival and it lasted one night and the rest <laughs> of the time it was flopping and gross because I didn't have a mirror, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, thank God I, I could actually dress today. It was great. Hey, hey, hairspray companies, look up Matt Reisinger, Freedback, yes. and sponsor the fuck out of him. Yeah, I'm using Tresemme right now. So like, go. I know- Tresemme, you- <laughs> what the fuck? Tresemme, what's up? Where's that check? Okay. So we're sitting here, or I'm sitting here with Michelle. She has been wonderful to us. She is wonderful for music. She is wonderful for films. She's wonderful. What's up, Michelle? Not a whole lot, Jason. What's up with you? Not a hell of a lot. I was just curious. If there was a film about Gasparilla Music Festival, what would the plot be like? Um, so <laughs> if I had to write a narrative for a film based on Gasparilla Music Festival, I think it would be it would be a coming of age film, and I think it would be because like Tampa's really trying to be somebody and become somebody. And so having a festival like this allows them to take on that role of like a teenager or like an early 20s like student or somebody. So yeah. what I think would happen would be, um, you know, if we, if we take the festival and we turn it into like a person, the person would be like, you know, I'm going to do something and I'm going to be somebody. So then they form this festival and a lot of people probably doubt them and and they maybe have some bad years and really poor turnouts and no real support. But as they continue to persevere, they become something bigger than what they thought they would be and put themselves on the map. And then they actually become something substantial. So when you think of Gasparilla Music Festival, they're, you know, along the lines of your South by Southwest or your Bonnaroo's. Your Lollapaloozas, your Lollapaloozas. Yeah, but I think like that's kind of what we all try to do. We always want to say like, I want to be in the big leagues. And so you continue to work for that. And you may never hit the big leagues, but the big leagues might also be something different than what you totally thought it was. All right, well, we're hanging out here with Bratcher and Cody from King Complex, hello. who hello. are about to ra- rock the haystack-filled mm-hmm. Tibbetts Corner stage here at Gasparilla Music Festival. And I know you guys requested the haystacks, right? Yeah, like I was saying, uh, we've been playing haystack fields for a long time, and just kind of feels like home. <laughs> we <laughs> we the actually haystacks. bundled them ourselves. That you, you would think that the hay grows on its own. It's not bundled like that yeah. naturally. So we, we took that upon ourselves. It's been a busy week. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing your set tonight. I haven't actually seen King Complex yet. So this is I'm a King Complex virgin. So for a King Complex huh. virgin, what can I expect to see tonight? How will my cherry be popped? Expect the unexpected. It That's will be <laughs> sodomized appropriately. Uh, can we, just before I do it by accident, can we curse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. shit. Yeah. Um, what to expect? What to expect? Is it gonna be loud? Loud? Gonna be loud for sure. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think uh, some of our records they think sound more electronic than like a band, but live I like to think we put on a rock show. So I would expect a rock show. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't expect it to be too mellow. So, because your music is kind of a mix of electronic and rock music, right? Right. But yes. are you, so are you telling me that you're leaning a little heavier towards the rock side tonight, or? Uh, it's just the live show in general. It's it's a lot more fun to like bring out the energy in, in that way. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the instruments sound more like instruments live, and I I think it's a cool transition for for people that like the record and uh, to hear it in a different manner. Which is no one. Right. I have yet to meet someone that liked the record. I've heard it. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can just let you guys go. Like, I don't even need to say anything. You know? Well. <laughs> you no, guys could do the might. podcast. Who are we interviewing next? The King Complex is doing it now. But Can we talk about funny. the boxed water? Yeah, we talked about right. Yeah, with boxed water is an interesting thing. Are right? we allowed to try it? Was What's this that? somebody's water? That's somebody's water, but I mean, yeah, you can try it There's if you want to try it. I mean, is there? You, wanna, you know, <laughs> it's there. It's sleep. there. So it's yours now. Oh, yeah. it's vodka. <laughs> That's why it's better. Yeah, boxed okay, water. Uh, okay. So here's the thing: is I was on, I was, I wasn't even on the fence, but actually drinking it is so much worse because you have to tilt it so far. <laughs> I didn't even think about the logistics of drinking out of the box water. It's pretty horrible, yeah, right? The uh, the physics here. Like, it also tastes like a box. 
I was so distracted by how difficult it was to actually drink. <laughs> I don't didn't even think about the taste. taste. The box as much. <laughs> if they could get the box into a cylindrical shape, I would be happy. And if they could figure out how to work with gravity a little better on the, the angles, yeah. I, I would be so into this. Well, it's like when you're driving, uh, when you're driving your car and you're trying to drink something and you're worried about hitting a bump because it's all going to splash in your face, only that's every time you drink out of this, I think. <laughs> it's always just going to come flying at you because of how much gravity is working on this water. It's, it's a pretty flawed design. You know, God forbid it was hot. Like, if I was drinking tea out of that. Or hot water. That'd be the end. So what you're saying is don't drink water and drive. Don't but drink and drive, I think, is the Don't the drink slogan. anything at all. <laughs> was I misinterpreting that? I think maybe. I haven't had a drink in so long. <laughs> Do recycle though. That's Do recycle. Good. I like that part of it. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It's well intended. It's just poorly executed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you're you're playing in a couple hours once the sun goes down, right? Once it's a little later at we're, night. We're, we're, uh, yeah, we're a dark band. We're really dark people. Because yeah. your because your show, you guys, it's it's a whole. I, I've heard that the spectacle. Who is told part you of, that? Yeah, you told me that. I did. Yeah, you told <laughs> me the spectacle. God, I guess I'm <laughs> no, no, actually, no. Who you know who it was who told me was uh, uh, Matt Reisinger, Friedback. Oh, he yeah. was oh, the cool. one that said, and he is very into like the aesthetic of his show and how right. his live show looks and sounds. And he said that you guys are kind of in that same lane where it seems like you really care about what the what the live show appears like. You know. Yeah. Is that true, or is he just... No, no, I, th I think no, he's pretty he's spot on. Nice. I mean, I, when you see it, I think you would have a hard time looking at it and being like, oh, they accidentally did all that. Yeah. Because uh, it's it's kind of a bitch. But, um, no, I mean, I, th I think if you go to to electronic shows five years ago, and, and even a lot of rock shows now, like, there's, there's such a visual element to what's going on that I think... Uh, you're doing yourself an injustice as somebody that's trying to entertain people by not including as many of the senses as, as you possibly could. And, and yeah. it's also a good thing to fall back on when you suck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as we're long like, as it looks cool. We're right? like 90% aesthetic. <laughs> Which is also so, why we go. So wait, 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 when you're mixing in all the senses, what other senses are we talking about? Smell. Well, smells? A lot smell. of smells. We, 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 hire, we hire a guy. He just walks around and crop dust the whole the whole venue. <laughs> we also uh, and he's not cheap bad. either because that nice. takes a toll physically. <laughs> Yeah, what is he crop Oh, he's, he's farting. He's oh, just okay, going, all right. Yeah. Yeah, just making sure we're, yeah. Yeah, we're on the same page. Because, well, physically it takes a toll on the guy, so he's not cheap. Would you he's not, that physical yeah. assault? Some people would. Like you're assaulting the nose? Uh, nasal. Like, nasal assault. Yeah. Na nasal assault? Assaulting the, nose. assaulting the nose. That sounds like a drug <laughs> reference. That's a good indie band Spe name. Speaking nose of albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of albums, though, yes. what, do we, what, what's, what do we got coming up for, for King Complex? What's on the horizon here? I think... Uh, I would say we're on the last leg of. Um, uh, <laughs> we're near the end. We're near the end. It's we're quitting. Almost over. Uh, no, we, we put out a record in, in September, and, and I think we're we're kind of at the finishing stages of putting an emphasis on that live. Uh, we've been we've been writing a handful of tunes and and kind of just started getting into recording some of them. So uh, we, we have some plans to, to go up the East Coast this summer, and I'm, I think the goal is to hopefully get something out uh, before then to promote at least a single. Yeah. Um, so sometime the, this summer. The album will also, going back to the sensory thing, it's going to come it's a with scratch a head sniff. scratcher. Oh, <laughs> we're both on the scratch. Yeah, so you can, you can massage your head with octopus-like tendrils, tendrils while you listen to the album, uh -huh. which uh, I think will make people like it. Let me go on record saying Cody seems to reference tendrils at any given opportunity <laughs> that's my favorite we one. have a we have like a flag holder in front of our house and we don't have any flags which is fine but cody took it upon himself to put some tendrils that that just sat there for months until they died and there were just these dead tendrils hanging from in front of our house that was like this horrible omen for anybody that walked in that so, so tendrils that sounds intense. I want to go to the King Complex house now. I didn't no, know that. You did not. I didn't know it was actually a complex. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a, a well. The the first name was King Apartment Complex, but <laughs> it was. But yeah. then you moved. Yeah, then we moved. We're so the big we, leagues now. Right now we're renting. Uh, <laughs> we're renting. <laughs> King Property Appraisal Complex is our next endeavor. <laughs> Well, it's really cool to see a band from our area doing something new, doing something different, you know, trying to do something a little bit outside of the mold of what's normally done here in the area. There's not a lot of electronic music 
yeah. although that scene's changing now you know sure, so yeah. so what inspired you to to build the sound that you have now uh I, th I think it happened naturally. We we both grew up playing in a lot of like rock bands and a lot of like pretty standard live stuff. I know for me, at some point, I really just kind of got bored like doing that. And music and performance to me is all about bringing someone into the moment and out of their own shit as much as possible. Like if I can really just allow someone to to live in that mind space for a while, that that's the coolest thing that I, I can be offered by other people so like if yeah. that's something that we can do for people that's that's awesome and uh, I would just like to play a part in, in doing that I really that's, like bass drops <laughs> what was yeah. that? I love bass drops the kids love the <laughs> you bass, want dude. more bass drops <laughs> yeah well I I was super like you said grew up in, in rock bands and I was a huge fan of, of classic rock music and blues music which is fairly organic um, and so I developed a deep hatred and, and bias against electronic music because I, I just thought it was cheating. Um, and I, I happened to, after hearing about it nonstop, I stumbled into a pretty light show. And I don't, you know, part of, part of it was the music to go, okay, there's a lot sonically here that you can't uh, really do with the tools that we use. And, and I'm interested in, in trying that. Uh, but the other thing was there's, there was such a culture around it. Um, the experience of the live show was something so different from anything I'd seen. And I thought that would be a really cool thing to, to try to get behind. And, and you can find it other places, um, but that was my first experience with, with that sort of community, um, which was, was pretty exciting at the time. The Wooks. All the Wooks. <laughs> yeah, man, they come come crawling out of the woods. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Watch I don't know. Do you, you, you guys are familiar with Wooks? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, there, yeah, there is like an Instagram oh, page for it. Yeah. 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 Oh shit. I feel <laughs> bad. They get a bad rap, and and I think. Do you think there's a reason for that? Well, I think it's no. contextual because in in your day to day life, you don't know how many wooks you. I mean, a few you can tell, but for the most part, I like to think they're probably decent people until they put that stupid hat on their head with the animals it's on it. It's not stupid. It's expressive. Right. Man. Okay. When they're not expressing <laughs> themselves in a. Stupid. I'm sorry, Wooks. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> apologies to hey, the you for the, for the those Wooks, few man. outdoor camping festivals a year. They probably deserve it. <laughs> right on. <laughs> but Wook on. I don't. You know. That's the thing. But. So um. So if the next finally we get the real final, interview. You what now? <laughs> we get the real interview now. Uh, <laughs> so uh, if the next album came out on vinyl. Yes. And you had a scratch and sniff sticker on it since you're so interested in smell and you have crop you dusters. You have no idea. Yes. What smell would the scratch and sniff be? Eucalyptus. I it's know, just like the best. from far to eucalyptus. <laughs> <laughs> We're very diverse. Uh, smells. What smells? Like not tacos from Taco Bell? Because no, I'm, I'm appetized every time well, I drive. We're talking by about the one. next record that I hasn't been seen. released or the past record? Like the next one. Okay. Like, so the next one would. Uh, well, there's. there's like sex. It could smell, smell like two things. Apples. It either smells like cocaine, or it smells like a fucking <laughs> gross club. <laughs> so either either a gross <laughs> club or a gross club. Right, It's right. going to smell like a gross well, club. Well, it either smells yeah. like a gross club or something you would find in a gross club. Okay. So toilet cocaine or like I clean surface cocaine? I don't know. I think that's a good meme. <laughs> uh, go with that. I, I thought cocaine would be funny to say that it's... Uh, Fair enough. Because Michael Sarah I'll cut that out for movie. you. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Because <laughs> <laughs> Michael Sarah. Right. Oh, who is the dude from Superbad? Judd the guy Apatow. that plays... Judd Apatow. We'll go into that later. Um, <laughs> I, will, I fucking love Judd Apatow. He, put, he actually put out a great He's Avid a Brothers documentary. Visionary. He is a visionary. I didn't realize he did Walk Hard, the, the Dewey Cox story. But anyway, uh, the dude that plays McLovin uh, does like a cameo in This Is The End. Oh yeah. Uh, or was it or was it Michael Sarah? Anyway, somebody comes up to somebody and shoves cocaine in their face. Goes, does this smell like cocaine to you? And I thought that was the funniest <laughs> shit I'd ever seen. <laughs> okay, so uh, what would be the shape of the butthole that made that smell? <laughs> this is so important. Starfish. This is and, very important. And I I can't this is express the rest of how much life. thought I've given this. We're talking about it's starfish shape. shape. Uh, yeah, I gotta be honest. I don't know what. I always thought butthole was its own shape. Okay, no. so like in, in kindergarten, they're like draw yeah. a circle. Okay, so you wouldn't draw a say, butthole. Hey, I was like, you uh. wouldn't say green eye. Maybe a green eye makes that. Or a I don't white know eye. what that means. What does that mean? I don't know. You never. Heard of a... <laughs> <laughs> Te teach me. You've have never you... heard of a brown eye? Have you guys? Yeah, seen... well, that's well, a butthole. There you go. So what about a green eye? 
Okay. Yeah. Well, now you're talking about colors less than shapes. I feel yeah. like. Well, you know, you talked about green cocaine when I wasn't expecting it. So. Right. Okay. You, you guys think we're taking twists? Kurt, it's like an M Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> Shyamalan ding dong. Shyamalan ding dong. All right, there you go. I'm done with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's sick of it. Well, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, <laughs> we, I think we covered a lot of important stuff here. Yeah. With King I think Complex. We, all, we all grew a lot. Any final thoughts for uh, for the Gasparilla Music Festival listeners? Have they thought about calling it Gaspy Festy? Hey, <laughs> That's I'll so run cute. that by the team. Yeah, you, know? you let them know that yeah, I said yeah. that. Okay, and uh, just right, Michelle, drop, drop my name if you're listening. Uh, you know, we have a PR request. I think, I think that would really help Rename PR your festival. public relations. If it was, say, say it one more time. Hmm? Gatsby Festy. Gatsby yeah. Festy. <laughs> We're broadcasting here live. Gatsby Festy. <laughs> Gatsby Festy. Yeah. 2018 from the Ripley. Ripley Giddy Exchange? Yes. Yeah. See, it's yeah. catching on. Tent. Uh, That's what's up. On the real, kingcomplexmusic.com to, to check out uh, a lot of stuff yeah, that we do. Facebook. Maybe King you Complex. like it. Facebook King Complex. I do want to add, because my friend Alan did the commercial. Oh, yeah. Fire it up.